This video is a brief synthesis of the evolution of countermeasures against radar homing missiles. So here's a 30 second summary of this video in four points. The details follow. Point one. In the early days of defense against radar homing missiles, it was all off-board countermeasures. Kick something over the side like a decoy or chaff cloud to attract the missile away from the ship. Point two. Then came onboard countermeasures. Put a jammer on the ship so you don't have to throw something overboard. The jammer had to provide range deception and angle deception, both. Now there are a few options for onboard angle deception, perhaps the best one being cross-polarization jamming, which was poorly understood. Point three, phased array antennas showed up about this time, which offered to the perceived multi-threat capability, but for practical reasons, it ruled out cross-pole jamming. Point four, since there was no practical option for onboard angle deception, it's necessary to add back in the offboard decoys or chaff, more or less negating the advantage of an onboard jammer. Now, to find out about cross-pole jamming, watch the video with this link. So here are the details. And by the way, these ideas were put together by a fellow EW practitioner, Paul Pulsifer. It's in unique synthesis that I have not seen anywhere else before. Now, in the beginning, there were the only option to counter a missile attack was off-board countermeasures. Kick a decoy over the side or throw up some chaff and hope the missile goes for that. Then came the brainwave that maybe it would be better if we could protect the ships without throwing stuff overboard, since eventually there won't be anything left to throw overboard, plus the stuff that's worth throwing overboard tends to be expensive, and of course there are resupply issues. So the solution is, how about onboard jamming, where the ship carries an electronic jammer to fool the missile? That way we don't have to resupply chaff rounds or decoys, and we never run out of electricity to run the jammer. Onboard jamming comes in two flavors, range deception in various forms, and angle deception, which loosely speaking comes in three forms, amplitude modulation, which is abbreviated AM, cross-pole or cross-polarization jamming, and something called cross-eye jamming. Now, AM was an excellent idea, and that technique drove the early missiles crazy. They couldn't hit anything. About 15 minutes after AM appeared, the missile designers switched from ConScan seekers to monopulse designs. So next up is cross-pole. Uh, it's easy to do for linearly polarized radars, but it's poorly understood. It produces interesting angle errors, but the how and the why was unclear in the early days, up to present day. Lastly, there's cross-eye. Well, in theory, it can produce excellent angle effects, but it's complex and tricky as hell to do. So, you know, ultimately, not a serious option. So that leaves cross-pole as the only option that's not for sure stroked off the list. On the other hand, range deception techniques were simple to explain and easy, easily understood. All the jammer has to do is repeat the seeker's signal back to it and drag the range gate off the ship by applying a gradually increasing uh, delay in, in the pulses that it sends back. But whatever the method, the jammer radiates the signals so the missile can't get range information on the ship. Now, key point here, Range countermeasures don't budge the seeker antenna. It's still pointing at the ship. Just a range gate is displaced. The seeker can't tell how far away the ship is, but the guidance information, the angle guidance information is still good. The missile can still fly along a heading that takes it right through the ship. But here's the kicker. Range deception was believed to have a multi-threat capability, which it does, and that means the ability to cause range deception against multiple missiles at the same time. It's easy to imagine a single jammer with single processing that can deny range information to multiple missiles all at the same time. So it's easy to get a mental picture of that and, and believe that it's possible. It's not so easy to picture how cross-pull could be used to counter multiple missiles at once. And that doesn't mean it can't, but it's just not obvious how. Now, around a second kicker, around this time, phased array antennas appeared. Exciting technology, can point multiple beams at multiple places, more or less all at once, and that part's easy to visualize. And multiple beams meshes well with the idea of a multi-threat range deception. A jammer with a phased array antenna could point a beam at each inbound missile and deliver lots of RF power. The downside is that they cost an eye water and fortune that the phased array antennas do because they're made from hundreds or thousands of little antennas that all have to be controlled coherently. All that to say, the range deception multi-threat capability went hand in glove with multi-beam phased array antennas. But there's a big practical problem. 
A jammer that has a phased array antenna and range deception doesn't provide any angle error. So the jammer by its, that jammer by itself can't make the missile miss the ship. And here's another problem. Cross-pull can't be done with a phased array antenna because the polarization purity requirement of the radiating antenna elements is too extreme. And, you know, trying to do cross-pull with a phased array antenna is just going to get you killed. You'll attract the missile. All the same, given the amount of money involved in phased array antennas, there was considerable economic pressure at the time to promote that solution, and it seemed like a pretty good idea anyway. But phased array antennas puts the counter-missile solution back in a corner. There's only, the only way to get the angle piece is to go back to off-board decoys and chaff in order to get that, 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 that to happen. So this solution, which is forced by choosing phase array antennas, more or less defeats the purpose of having an onboard jammer in the first place, plus there's another problem I'll get to in a minute. Remember, I'm only talking about counter-missile jammers here. There are lots of excellent applications for phased array antennas. Just if, you, if you use it for a counter-missile jammer, you're going to need something else. Now that said, Crosspol does have a multi-threat capability, if, even if it's implemented with a single horn antenna. And this concludes a brief overview of the evolution of onboard and offboard uh, countermeasures against radar homing missiles.